Dylan Gabriel enters a new regime with Gus Malzahn entering the picture, and he's a quarterback that's not just a deep ball passer. He is very capable of making those throws look easy. He has this arm strength to make those long completions, but he also has the touch and great ball placement and great accuracy to make throws that a lot of people I don't think give him credit for. We're going to look today at what he can do. We're going to show off the arm strength, but we're also going to talk about that ball placement and accuracy. So, Dylan Gabriel, let's go. This is the first game of the year against Georgia Tech, and it's just a display of Dylan Gabriel's ability to throw the ball deep and also a great display of speed that UCF boasts every single year, and that's going to be the case again. Since Jalen Robinson is coming back, and this, this play is just – crazy because it's essentially a one-man route and I say that because well we'll break it down here but just the ability for him to just chuck it deep and let his guys go get it is just uh, it's just incredible but yeah like I said it's essentially a one-man route because we're going to see this guy is essentially not going to be ready he's essentially going to be put his hands up, like, what's going on? The two guys down here are essentially not a factor. This guy, Trey Nixon, I believe, gets pushed out of bounds and roughed up. So it's, there's they're not even really running routes. And then Robinson has go here. So we're going to get a, a one-man route, like I said. And it's just, I, I don't really know if Hypo wanted this to, to happen or what he's looking for, but he essentially just said, hey, our guy's better one-on-one -on -one versus your guy. And the result, obviously, is great for UCF. Again, this guy, hands up, what am I doing? And just the ability to win based off just that alone is just it just shows you how good they can be. And I hope that Gus Manzan is able to find a way to utilize that greatness. Now, Gabriel here throws, he basically just throws it for his guy to go get. And as you can see, he throws it from essentially the 15 to the opposite 40. And he just gives Robinson a chance to go get it. Now, you can make an argument that we'd want the ball a little bit more on the outside, but given where Robinson started out and that he's so close to the sideline, there's really no complaints about letting his guy go make a play. Throws it accurate enough, gives him a chance, and Robinson just goes and gets it. Maybe if he throws it more to the outside, Robinson's able to score, but I think with a cornerback that close, it was just a matter of get him the football and then hope, just get as much as you can after that. Now here's one thing. So another great one-man route, essentially, because Trey Nixon just beats his man and... We're going to see the two guys up top don't really do anything. Marlon Williams kind of runs a slant, if you want to call it that. Kind of jogs a slant. And it's just a great ball by Gabriel. Great route by Nixon. This is where Nixon gets hurt. And this is kind of the derailment for his 2020 season in terms of injury. But just a great play here. and it, It's also, I don't know, it's also confusing because... To me, if this is what you're going to do, you're going to run one-man routes, you're essentially saying you either have confidence in your guys, and I will clearly did, and for good reason, or you're just so confident as a play caller that you are you just know one route is going to do it. But then, if that is the case, then I don't understand. Either way, I don't understand the later game against Tulsa in the first half Heifel just goes into the locker room with plenty of time, two timeouts, and the ability to move the ball down the field like this, and he just doesn't do it. So it doesn't make any sense if you're that confident to later just kind of pack it in. I don't know. It was a great play by Gabriel, something that he did all season, and I, that's the one thing that I just don't understand. I, I get the confidence and your trust in your guys, but I didn't understand that at the end, but I don't know. Late in the game for UCF, and we're, we're going to get a smash route here. And essentially, we're going to get Marlon Williams here running the corner, and then we're going to get the other wide receiver, Jake Paris, 
running a slant or an in here. And it's just another great ball by Dylan Gabriel. Easy route and then perfect ball placement. Really can't beat it at this point because it's just the ball's in the right spot. The defender can't get to it. And it's just an easy touchdown for UCF. Marlon Williams just beats his man. Not really the best route in terms of separation, but it's enough. And Dylan Gabriel really does most of the work here. You look where the ball is converted, just great. Great ball placement, right where it needs to be. And you'll see it's just far enough outside of the defender's reach where there's no chance for him to even get hands on the ball. It's just that good of a pass. And simple route concept, but this the throw makes it, makes it work there. Early in the ECU game, UCF was struggling with penalties, with false starts, really. And it just wasn't going well. And then this is a throw that kind of calmed everybody down. Dylan Gabriel's capable of making those kinds of throws, whether it's a deep ball or even just an intermediate throw like this one here. So he, you can see we're back in their own territory pretty far. And it's just going to be essentially a two-man route because you're going to get a kind of a hitch here. Uh, it's just not anything crazy. And then we're going to get a guy running essentially by himself, with not really going anywhere. Uh, but then on this side, we're going to get a dig route. And then on the outside, we're going to get a comeback here. And Gabriel's going to hit the dig route here. It's not just deep balls for him. It's not just he will chuck it up and hope his guy goes and gets it. He's more than capable of making throws like this. And it's really impressive what he's able to do. And it's going to be exciting to see him in a system where they're able to utilize that a little bit more. Again, just a, a good throw under pressure. As you can see, Blitz comes in. Marlon Williams is able to slip right underneath the uh, right behind the backpedaling linebacker and in front of the safety. And that's just a throw that they needed. They moved the chains as well, and especially with where they were going the wrong way really quickly. And you can see just the patience to look, look, let it go, trust his guy to make a play first down. Just a great throw, great play call, and even though it's only two-man route, great execution by Dylan Gabriel here. This is a play that UCF ran multiple times against Memphis with varying success. And the last time they ran on this drive, Dylan Gabriel threw to a different route and was a little bit off. And this is just a testament to how quickly he can learn. So like I said, this is on the same drive. And same exact route counts up here. So we're going to get an out here number two on the top and then we're going to get a go from number one and then on the stack side here we get essentially a drag route on the back side and then on number one is going to go out and then kind of curl back here and like I said Gabriel threw the out last time and they saw something that showed that the the drag would be open, and this time he decides to, to wait a little bit, and he waits and just waits till an opening comes through, and as you can see, he finds a window where Ryan O'Keefe is able to get through, and he just hits the window. He times it perfectly. And as you can see, the three guys essentially looking at Gabriel, they see Ryan O'Keefe coming across the middle and they're not able to do anything. They find a spot in the defense that's open. You can see they're scrambling for a fumble, but he was called down. We'll see it from the end zone view a little bit better of the, the window that he sees. So he looks to the right or left, excuse me, nothing there. Sees the opening, he realizes that he's going to have this all this space over here and throws it to one of the fastest guys in college football. Good things are going to happen. I mean, look at the protection, too, even. So, two rushers on this side going over here. The one edge rusher goes all the way over here. 
You have one guy watching Gabriel to see what he's going to do. All of this room is for Gabriel to throw, and he's going to throw it to this area up here. It's really unfair if you're facing UCF because you just can't give him that much space with that speed, and you can't give Gabriel this much time to throw. We're going to end on a few just great throws by by Gabriel and just throws shows the accuracy which he's able to throw the ball, throw it into tight windows. And these are throws that not a lot of quarterbacks can make. So this first one, down on the goal line, and that ball cannot be thrown any better. I know it's a little blurry, but this is the cornerback's hands from Memphis. He's literally right here. UCF's receiver has his hands right there. The ball is literally in a perfect spot. There's not a better place that you could throw it. And this is the kind of talent that he has. Now, this he's going to get, when people go watch the film from 2020, they're going to see a lot of Dylan Gabriel just chucking it up. And he's really good at that. But there are also plays like this that show incredible accuracy, incredible ball placement, and really just gives his guy and his guys only a chance to catch the football. And this is just one of those plays. Another throw that it just the right right spot, and as you can see, just incredible accuracy, great ball placement, nice touch with a little velocity on the, on the ball as well. This one against Tulane, corner of the end zone, uh, man, that's tough. And you look at, I don't know how Arnold Williams gets this wide open because there's two guys over there. I don't know that you see. The defender is looking on the inside, sees Gabriel's going to throw it. At this point, all he should really be looking at is Marlon Williams because that's really only his responsibility at this point. This safety probably has to watch because he has Jalen Robinson coming in here, but Marlon Williams is really this guy's only responsibility. I'm not sure what his thoughts were, but, I mean, look how wide open he is. Look, what is he, what's he doing? I, I don't know, but still... There's not much space for Doug Gabriel to throw this ball, and he puts it in the right spot. You literally, we're talking inches there with Marlon Williams able to catch the ball to the sideline. Perfect ball. Doesn't have to worry about a defender, and just <laughs> a great throw. It helps that the DB doesn't do much, doesn't know what he's really doing there, not paying attention. But this is just an, another nice ball that just shows what Dylan Gabriel is capable of doing, throwing the football. One more pass here. It's just another ball where the defender's not really paying attention, and Dylan Gabriel takes advantage of that. It, it's not the first time we see him do it. We saw him do it earlier in the season, and now he does it again. Just a, a, the ability to read not only the defense, but read a defender on what he's doing and realize where he can throw the ball based on what that defender is doing. So you're going to see Mario Williams is going to come over the middle. Linebacker's covering him. Linebacker doesn't know where the ball is. Gabriel releases it early enough where the linebacker can't pick it up right away. And if, if we slow it down here, you're going to be able to see the ball placement and where it goes. So, defender doesn't know where it is. He just turns now, and the ball is already on its way. It's already right over the top. Again, not. it's just, there's not much room for Marlon Williams to catch this ball. And Gabriel gives him just enough time to get feet in to complete the pass and score a touchdown, and obviously, like I said, he reads the defender, so we're going to see defenders running with his back. Gabriel knows that he can throw it, and he just turns it out. The ball's basically there. So the intelligence to know that he has a great matchup, Marlon Williams against a linebacker. He knows that the defender's not looking for the ball. He can throw it a little bit closer to where the defender is because he knows that he's not looking, and there's really not a better place that you can put it. And just another example of Dylan Gabriel's ability to make incredible throws. He's not just a guy who's going to just sit back. You know, I, I related Hypo's offense to AAU basketball because it felt like that's what it was. It wasn't really super organized at times. 
and there's not there wasn't a ton of discipline at times, but man, is it fun to watch? And that's it's tough because Dylan Gabriel's gonna get put into this box of being a quarterback that just chucks it up, and, and he's way more than that. And Gus Malzahn is gonna be able to utilize that and showcase his ability to throw the ball not just deep, but on the short to intermediate routes too. He's a player who can he great deep ball as we've talked about, but also the ability to put touch on it, to throw with great ball placement, great accuracy, and just make plays that a lot of quarterbacks can't. I think people are still sleeping on Dylan Gabriel, and I think that they wake up after this year.